Okay, then. Ms. Adcock, since you are senior. Well, thank you. That doesn't mean older, it just means senior. I think I am that too. Okay, um, double qualified. <laughs> so, what do you think of Kazan's resignation? Who do you think should replace him, and what, uh, what qualifications does he, well, he have? Uh, I, I think the university will do a fine job of finding a replacement. Uh, I think that General Caslin, President Caslin, did a, a splendid job in the two years he was here. He, he uh, expanded the influence of the university in a number of areas, besides doing a great job with, with the virus, which was even recognized by national authorities. Uh, his work with expanding the influence of the university into the cyber command in in georgia and with the dream port in in aiken and all of the cyber uh, area the arena that we see taking on more and more importance right now i think he did a splendid job i'm sorry to see him go i know a lot of the board members i, I believe are sorry to see him go uh, we wish him well do you think he should have resigned well that's a question for the general and for the board and I'm aware that there are a lot of conversations uh, going on and uh, I, I presume that they made the decision that they thought was the right one and I think now we need to look to the future. We have a great university, about 50,000 students and it has enormous capacity, enormous influence in the state and, other, uh, and outside of the state as well. And we have to keep building. Did you speak to Caslin prior to his uh, resignation? Yeah, I spoke to him before, uh, a couple of days before and, and afterwards. And he explained that he, he thought that the best thing to do was for to go and explained why. And uh, that's his decision. And the, and the board accepted his decision. I know there was a good bit of discussion. I hear there was. And I, that's... Uh, that's their decision, so we'll we'll live with that decision and stand by it. Did you try to change his mind at all when he told you that he planned to resign? I, I told him that I was was sorry to hear that that's what he wanted to do because I have enormous respect for him. I think he's done great work for the people of our state through that university. I think uh, I, I'm I'm in, in very appreciative to what he did in in two short years and I think as the university continues to grow particularly in some of these new areas we'll realize more and more how important the efforts that he launched uh, are and will be to our state. Yes sir. Yeah I have a few questions about the mass order. Um, so do you believe the time that you released the executive order on masks on Tuesday afternoon gave districts enough time to respond to your decision? Yes ma'am I have been as you know, since July, have been urging the districts to let the children go back into the classroom for face-to-face -face instruction. I think every week, probably, I repeated that in, in places all over the state. Finally, the legislature acted and passed a law that required it because there were some that were just uh, recalcitrant and, and would not do what we knew is best for the children. We knew that the children were suffering. They weren't getting the quality education we want them to have. It's virtually impossible to do that virtually at, at children of those young ages. And as we went through the virus and learned more and more about it, there came a time where it was clearly the thing to do is to, to let the parents make that decision. The parents know their children. They know the the impact that wearing a mask in classrooms are, are having on them because they could see it at home. Just like we know that the children not being able to have face-to-face -face instruction in the classroom, having a teacher over their shoulder teaching them to read, and not being able to go in and see the classmates and for the teachers and other children to, to be able to, to be with them, we know that that was having negative impacts on the children psychological, mental, social impacts, unintended consequences. Well, same thing applies at this point with the masks. Uh, and at some point, you just, the government has to let the parents, when it's, when it's uh, appropriate for parents to make decisions for their children, which is all of the time, it, is, it was time. And uh, the, uh, the education establishment, most of it has been resisting these very obvious things that should have been done a long time ago. I think there will be serious consequences for, for our children because of it. I think it's a, it's a shame the, the way that the children and the, the parents have been 
uh, treated uh, in the unnecessarily. Now there was a time when we had to take some very stern measures, but that time is gone. I think the schools are very well organized with their information dissemination and uh, communication and uh, I am concerned about the chaos at the home of the parents and am satisfied and happy with the relief that this has brought, brought to the parents who are the ones that at this point need to be the, the sole judges on what is best for their children. The, looking at the looking at at the data, if we we get it every day in uh, at, at DHEC and other other sources, it's been reported all over the place. If you look at those who uh, who go to the hospitals, who they very very uh, few children. It's just because of a lot of different things. The data shows that they are not the ones at risk. As you remember, it's the older people at risk, and that's where we focus the efforts at the beginning. Yes, if a parent wants the child to wear the mask, then the child should wear the mask, should listen to mom and daddy and do what they say. If the, if the parents do not want the child to wear a mask, then the child should not be required to wear a mask in the classroom. Well, lawyers have questioned whether or not you're legally authorized to make a decision on masks in schools. Can you explain how you're legally authorized to allow parental children? Yes, the law allows it. And in terms of the law, on the COVID liability bill that you signed a couple of weeks ago, mm -hmm. how do you think your order coincides with because the, the uh, CDC and DHEC uh, recommendations and guidelines uh, are that and there's flexibility in them and this is a part of that flexibility. Well, you, as you recall, the, the governor is a, by law, is a, is a member of the board, but I think the university is going to do just fine. I, th I think that it, it is growing, it is in strength, and I'm sure they, they have processes in place now to make it very clear as to what is happening that uh, should eliminate some of the questions that came up before. Do you think Pastides is a good choice for interim president? I think Harris Pastides is a fine choice for almost anything. He is... Uh, he is quite a stellar man, and I think he, we're lucky that he's available. Governor, the uh, Senate passed the House Amendment to the death penalty bill yesterday. Can we get your response to that, and when should we expect you to sign that into law? As soon as it gets to my desk. And just your response overall to the bill being passed? I'm for it. Governor, uh, the House made a real priority this year to try to get hate crimes passed before the end of, I mean, I guess, I'm sorry, today. The Senate has not made that step, the same priority. What's your reaction to that bill not passing? Well, some, as you know, the, the House and the Senate sometimes are mysterious in the way and timing in which they move. But uh, we, we'll see, see what they do and, and make a decision. And are you worried South Carolina will be the last state holding the bus, being the last state without a hate crime bill? Say it again. Are you afraid South Carolina is going to be left the last man standing, you know, without a hate crime bill? No, we are, we are last in a lot of things, and it's good to be last. We are, we are last in some things that we don't want to be last in, or we are first in some things that we like and others we don't, but uh, every state has exactly the same situation. As I'm sure I, I don't, what I'm saying, I don't think that's, that is, that's the, uh, the criteria, whether you're first or last or in the middle. I don't think that's the, that's the thing. What you want to do is when you pass laws is have good laws. Yeah. Criticize legislators for not passing that law. Um, did you urge legislators to pass it, or what do you think about the bill yourself? I've, I've tried to study those in, in other states to see what the differences are, as well as the federal legislation. They, there, there's, there are some differences. Uh, I think they're positive parts. There's some concerns I have, but it, but it, it, because the process has not gotten to the point where it's time for me to make a decision, I. I will make that decision when it when it comes. Governor, I just want to clarify your response to her question. You're saying 
said the decision to allow General Mass Choice does not undermine the Coalition Liability Safe Harbor Act. And That's right. Up to legal action. Yeah, it, it does not undermine it. That's correct. Governor, as far as the, the USC board, I mean, they're, they're also being criticized for uh, deciding over the phone, my understanding, to, to put Harris Bastides as interim. They've been accused of some ethics state law violations. You've been someone who's been calling for transparency in laws and transparency in ethics, and I'm wondering what your message is to the board today. Well, I think everybody ought to, ought to follow those rules. Um, sometimes there are exigent circumstances that uh, cause people to do things in certain ways, I, but I, we ought to always follow the rules. That's what they're there for. Another bill coming to your desk for signature is the uh, open carry. Talk about that bill coming you know, when it gets to your desk, and what do you think about that? I'll sign it. Talk about good legislation. It's been a big priority. I've, 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 anything that protects the Second Amendment is uh, something that I will support, and I think that bill does that. We've, we need to make investments uh, in e education. We need to get the scholarships uh, for those uh, needy ones. You know, we have a number of proposals that we have, have made on that. We need to get the four-year-olds in kindergarten throughout the state. We need to uh, provide for the law enforcement, for raises for law enforcement. We need to, to be sure to have the kind of mental health uh, assistance we need in all the schools and we need to address the Santee Cooper situation but I'd say the main thing we need to do is because we did we did not stop with the virus that is we slowed down but we st did not stop we did not do like they did in other states and lock everything down we were very deliberate and conservative in our pr approach and it worked our unemployment insurance fund is full and we are ready to blast off while other states are trying to dig out. So we, go, we have opportunities for economic growth that are coming our way that are, are, we're going to take advantage of. And I want every member of the legislature, every, everyone that's, that is involved in the business and economic growth and prosperity of our state to understand that we have a remarkable opportunity now in, in our state that they don't have in some others. Well, yes, I've, I've said that before. We, we, when I was attorney general, we had these kind of things happen. And uh, we, I would just urge people to, 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 be, uh, to, to think about it. It's not necessary. It, we understand that the company has said they are, they've already opened back up to some extent. So that's, that's good news. But uh, there are laws against... Uh, price gouging and those sorts of things for this, these kind of situations. But I'd urge everybody to, to try to try to be calm and uh, don't fill up if you don't need to. Right. Back to USC vacancy, the president. Talk about what kind of person you think is a good fit for that role. Obviously, Catholic came from a military background. Maybe it wasn't academic enough or whatever. Some people like I think there are people from all, all kinds of backgrounds that would, would be Terrific. If, if you go back and look at the various uh, presidents and, uh, and even uh, members of the board, uh, as well as professors, uh, you, you see that there's an enormous amount of talent there. But I, I have confidence in, in that process. And because the South Carolina and the University of South Carolina are such great places to be, I think that, that we will be able to find a, a, a very, very fine um, uh, president. Uh, I know the the board is determined to do that, and, and I know they'll succeed. Thank you, Reverend.